Another week, another Biden special, and no, I do not mean policy, I mean goof up. It's campaign season in the United States of America, so we'll be hearing a lot from the president. And if it's anything like this, you will be entertained. On Wednesday, Biden was speaking at a fundraiser in Washington. He was talking about immigration. It's a major political issue in the U.S. Donald Trump advocates stricter rules on immigration. Joe Biden does not. He says immigrants are important to the U.S. economy. But listen to how he defended his position. This is Joe Biden. I'm quoting. Why is China stalling so badly economically? Why is Japan having trouble? Why is Russia? Why is India? Because they're xenophobic. They don't want immigrants. Immigrants are what makes us strong. A lot to unpack here. First, the political blunder. Japan is probably America's most important ally in Asia. India is not an ally, but a partner and a very important one at that. Washington has invested a lot in its relationship with New Delhi, yet what does Joe Biden do? Call both of them xenophobic in one sentence. Talk about a political masterstroke. Secondly, does Biden's theory make sense? In his country, perhaps it does. America's population has aged in the last decades. Many of them have left the workforce, so immigrants have plugged the gap. Let me show you some data. In 1996, immigrants made up less than 12% of the U.S. workforce, and now more than 18%. It's a record high. There are more than 29 million foreign-born workers in the U.S., and what sort of work do they do? Everything from management to services to construction. In fact, the U.S. is often called the land of immigrants. So Biden is right about his country. But he made a crucial mistake, a mistake that lots of U.S. politicians make. He thought America is the world. What's true in the U.S. is true everywhere. That was his assumption, except it's not. Let's look at the three issues that Biden raised. Need for immigrant workers, economic slowdown, and xenophobia. India's economy and demography are very different from the U.S. In India, 68% of the population is working age. It's much lower in the U.S. Only 59% native-born Americans are of working age. So India's problem is the opposite. We do not need foreign workers. We already have a large and young workforce. What we need is jobs for them. Which brings us to the second issue. What economic trouble is Joe Biden talking about? India's GDP grew by 8.4% in the third quarter of the last financial year. It's the fastest growing major economy in the world. Projections for the future also look good. The IMF is expecting, expecting India to grow by 6.5% in this financial year. That's 2024 to 2025. But now it has raised its projection from 6.5% to 6.8%. Compare this to other Asian economies. China is projected to grow by 4.6%. Japan could grow by 0.9%. And South Korea, 2.3%. Now, don't get us wrong. India's economy faces a number of challenges. We need more reforms. We need more jobs and more investments. But immigration does not figure on anyone's list. And finally, the third issue, xenophobia. Indians have traditionally welcomed outsiders. It has been a cultural strong suit. And that continues even today. India is home to around 5.2 million immigrants. They make up the 12th largest immigrant population in the world. And where did these people come from? Mostly the neighborhood, like Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Some came in search of jobs, others escaped persecution. Yet Biden says India is xenophobic. We don't expect much nuance from the U.S. president. After all, he's in election mode right now. So winning is his biggest priority. But he should be mindful of the consequences. We saw another goof up last month. Biden claimed that his uncle was eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea. Again, Papua New Guinea is a U.S. ally. Their prime minister hit back at Biden's remarks. Listen to what he said. President Biden's remarks may have been a slip of the tongue. However, my country does not deserve to be labeled as cannibals. Do you see the problem? Biden may drop a statement and move on, but what he says has consequences. You can't just call your partner xenophobic. That to fellow democracies. His advisors better get a grip on the president's loose cannon statements. If not, one of these days, he could trigger a diplomatic storm.